good source or bad source? It's probably the most frequent question I've seen. Is this a legitimate source? Can I trust this author? Are you a good source or a bad source? The best way I find is developing the wisdom muscle to see past the bullshit. Sight, sight beyond sight. sight if you will. Let's go over a few things I've learned over the decades. Scientific method. When researching anything, it's important to understand how science actually discerns facts. If you're like me, a filthy Yankee with an American public school education, you were likely taught science, history, and everything else as concrete hard facts that can be easily bubbled into a quick and easy Scantron test. And not that all scientific facts are actually theories that are always subject to change. That change needs to be verifiable and repeatable, but that's why, especially in the US, we see the world in such black and white hard facts without nuance. Because as children, we're taught things as facts. In part, because children have difficulty understanding nuance. That level of complicated three-dimensional thought doesn't kick in until your teens. But by then, we're so engrossed in training our youths to be obedient workers and pushing up our star testing numbers rather than the ability to comprehend and think for ourselves that we end up with all these adults that think junk science is valid. Uh oh what was that word? What word? Did you say youths? Yeah, two youths. What is a ute? Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Two youths. All that is to say, when researching, realize that nothing is a true, immutable, hard fact, and that a theory is the highest attainable standard of any knowledge. Everything is subject to change. And when you're researching heathenry, or any other tradition that has to be rebuilt from old literature, second and third hand accounts, and archaeology, it's important to understand that often all we have is the ancillary evidence surrounding a potential theory that may not be testable outside of thought experiments, discussion, and inevitable UPG. No reality is an absolute. All are permissible. Which brings us to gurus. The term guru comes from Hinduism. It means spiritual teacher, but we often use it to discern fake spiritual teachers. As the surge of new age spirituality that was spawned in the Victorian era and had a resurgence with the 60s and 70s seemed to spawn a lot of fake spiritual teachers. So it's become shorthand for charlatan carpetbagger types, people more interested in amassing a following selling books and conning people in crisis out of their hard-earned dollars rather than any practical wisdom, helpful knowledge, or tools outside of their own content. Which reminds me, don't forget to like and subscribe. And my book is available on Amazon. But seriously though, things to watch out for. Saying their way is the only way claiming to have secret knowledge or saying they're some kind of special being who has access to wisdom others don't. And of course, watch out for content that feels more spiritual while only having wiki level information. If there's a religious tone, a vibe or melody, but they've only been heathen for like two years and give you shallow Google search information, chances are that's a bad source. I'm not gonna call anyone out, but if someone comes to mind, you may want to rethink that source. False information. This is everywhere, but TikTok is pretty famous for it. It goes hand in hand with online gurus, but can be separate. This is where your fact-checking think meat comes into play. You have to familiarize yourself with the lore. For Norse heathens, both Eddas are available on LibriVox in audio format for free. Dude reading it has the personality of drying paint, but if you're familiar with the lore, it can be a nice listen to on a long drive. And if you're a Germanic heathen or on another path, they do have a pretty extensive library. My dad always told me a good rule of thumb was to get at least three sources. Never just trust the information of one source. There are popular authors who've been famous in heathen circles for decades, but they're bad sources because they write UPG as though it's fact. Knowing logical fallacies helps. Not everyone is lucky enough to find a beautiful crimson-haired goddess who will challenge their shitty ideas. But there's plenty of YouTube videos exploring the fallacies. Another thing public school would teach if it wasn't trying to just push out obedient workers to do the labor of our corporate overlords. UPG. I've done an entire video on UPG, so I'll make this brief. Unverifiable personal gnosis is knowledge one may possess that cannot be corroborated by historical sources. UPG is important 
as it's often the spiritual aspect of your religion, it can heavily inform your praxis, and it's what takes a reconstructed religion from historical anachronism and makes it a system of belief and worldview. But, very often, guru types will vomit UPG as though it were hard fact. Wicca is notorious for this. And I've actually had to make a few rebuttal videos trying to dispel misinformation. Sather is a great heathen example of this. We have almost no information on Sather, so most Volver and Vidkar are speaking from their UPG and experience, which, if in good faith, should be cited. If someone isn't letting you know it's UPG, chances are they're a bad source. What makes a good source? Honesty, integrity, and being genuine. We're all in a constant state of learning. Odin wasn't born wise. He had to earn it, had to make sacrifices and mistakes. A good source will cite their sources when possible, but will also give opposing opinions and won't stray away from truth. It can be hard to set aside our egos and admit when we're wrong. But think about this, if you're proven wrong today, then tomorrow you'll be right. We have to evolve and change. I know for a fact my first gods and archetypes videos weren't nearly as well thought out and researched as my more recent ones. I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, ask. If you don't want to ask me, go to r slash Norse Paganism on the reddits. We have a lot of very knowledgeable heathens on there. We don't always agree, but that's a good thing. Discussion and questioning is how we test our knowledge and wisdom for fallacies. Be better tomorrow than you were yesterday. We are the sum of our actions. Skull.